Okay, thanks for joining me again on uh, Friday uh, Zoom meeting. I just um, love getting on here and talking to people and sharing with one another, uh, you know, realizing that we're all one body of believers. Uh, we're all brothers and sisters uh, because we all have the same father. We have the one father, the God of all creation, the God of heaven and earth. And it's Jesus Christ that makes us all one. And uh, he joins us all together. And uh, we're one brother. We're all brothers and sisters because we have the same father. Um, and, and that's what it is in a family. Uh, they're all, they're all brothers and sisters because they all have the same father. And we do, we also in the body of believers and the church, uh, that's who we are. We're all brothers and sisters because we have the same um, heavenly father. I just want to share a message uh, today about uh, about being born again, about getting about receiving salvation. Um, it's uh, probably a, a strange topic to be talking about uh, because we all know what it means to be saved. We all know uh, that we that we are born again and that we have to be born again. Jesus said that you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, and, and, and it's so important that we do that. But, uh, but it's just great to have a look at scriptures and to talk about, um, about, about receiving salvation. Um, and I just want to share that uh, to, uh, tonight, uh, today on Friday, uh, Zoom, about, uh, about receiving salvation. <coughs> so what, what I mean by receiving salvation uh, we don't we don't get salvation. We receive salvation. We don't get healing. We receive healing um, it, because it's something that Jesus has already done for us. Uh, so that's why we reach out by faith and we receive our salvation. Uh, we don't <clears throat> we don't have to do. All we have to do is to, to reach out and to believe, you know, when we get born again, when we uh, when I was born again uh, 50 years ago, there was um, there was nothing more. Uh, Jesus didn't do anything more than what he did for me 2000 years ago. When I was born again, I, I was just born again just about 50 years ago now, just over 50 years. When I got born again, when I received salvation, Jesus didn't do anything more for me than what he did for me. 2000 years ago when he died on the cross he died on the cross for the sins of all of us of all the world not just for me not just for you but for all of us for all times for all eternity so when we get when we receive salvation there's nothing more that jesus has to do nothing more that jesus can do than what he did for us 2000 years ago so when I received salvation, he didn't come back and die on the cross. He's already done that. He did that over 2000 years ago. So when I received salvation, all I did is I reached out and believed and received salvation. See, uh, salvation is a result of God's love and grace and mercy and favor. And uh, he, all of that connecting with my faith and there was a great explosion of grace and mercy and power. And God brought me out of the kingdom of darkness and placed me into the kingdom of his dear son. And that's what salvation is all about. It's God's grace joining with my faith that caused an explosion that brought me out of the kingdom of darkness and placed me into his, into his kingdom. I was born again. You were born again. When you gave your heart to the Lord, you were born again uh, because of uh, of your of God's grace and His mercy, and because of your faith joining together and creating an amazing explosion, and you were born again. Um, and that's just the most powerful thing that we can ever do. You know, it says um, in Colossians chapter uh, one. Uh, I'm just going to read a few scriptures tonight because it's just important that you with that we read scriptures and uh, you know we understand them. Uh, so this first one is Colossians chapter one, verse twelve to fourteen. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. So that's how we receive salvation. We receive salvation by the power of the blood of the lamb, by what Jesus did for me, what Jesus did for you over 2000 years ago. 
So when we were born again, there's nothing more that Jesus could do, that more, nothing more that he needed to do, more than what he did for us 2,000 years ago. We just receive what Jesus did for us. He uh, He shed his blood for us, and uh, and we reached out by faith and received that. And so his grace and his mercy and our faith combined together creates an explosion of salvation, and we are born again. He brings us out of the kingdom of darkness and places us in the kingdom of his son. And so we just believe what Jesus did for us over 2,000 years ago. He took our place. He took our place and he died for our sin. Uh, you know, our sin has made a separation between us and God. That sin made a separation. We couldn't get back to God because of that barrier of sin. But Jesus died on the cross for us. He died in our place. All of our sin was taken out of our account and placed in Jesus' account so that uh, he took away all of our sin. So there was no uh, impediment. There was no blockage. There was no uh, a wall of separation between us and God. And we were able to come into his kingdom uh, through the, uh, like I said, through, through God's grace and his mercy and our faith combined together, created an explosion where he brings us out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his son. So, and then uh, if you go over, look at um, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says there, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God pre prepared for beforehand that we should walk in them. So verse 8 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. For by grace you have been saved. So we are saved by faith. The grace of God and our faith combined together creates an explosion, brings us out of the kingdom of darkness and into God's kingdom, and we are set free. We are born again believers, and uh, and we're on our way to heaven. Uh, but we've got to live this life here on earth, and, um, and, and we've got to live a life of holiness and righteousness. That's what God has created us for. He's created us to live in holiness and to live in righteousness. If you look at um, in Ephesians chapter 4, Verse 30, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. When you were born again, your spirit was 100% born again. And uh, your spirit is 100% holy and righteous and, uh, and, and able to come into God's kingdom. Uh, so our spirit was born again. And um, and and we're and and the Holy Spirit seals that, and um, we uh, it's a done deal. We are born again because our spirit man, our spirit inside of us, he comes to live inside of us. When we ask Jesus to come in, he comes into our hearts, into our lives, into our spirit, and we're one hundred percent born again. So our spirit is one hundred percent full of the Holy Ghost, and it is sealed for the day of redemption. We can't. We have. We cannot sin. We don't want to sin, and we have a heart after God. So where does sin, God? Uh, where does sin live? Where does sin come from? Uh, we still. Does that mean I can live a life of holiness and do not sin? And we know that that doesn't happen. We know that we do occasionally sin. So sin is in our carnal minds. Sin is not in our spirit. We are born again. Our sin nature that's in our spirit is uh, dead and buried and we are alive to God because our spirit is born again. But we still occasionally sin. So where does sin live? It's, sin lives in our carnal mind. Our spirit is more born again, but our soul is not. Our mind is not born again. We need to renew our minds. So our minds, are some is renewed and some is carnal. When we sin, the reason why we still keep on sinning is because we listen to our carnal mate, our carnal mind. We don't listen to our renewed mind. We follow after our carnal mind. Um, now, before we were born again, our carnal mind just ruled our lives. We just 
fell into sin because we wanted to sin, because our carnal mind ruled and reigned in our lives. But when we were born again, when Jesus spoke the word of salvation into our hearts, our hearts were convicted of our sin, convicted that we weren't connected to God, that we were a sinful nature, and we surrendered our hearts. We accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We accepted what he did for us on the cross, and we were born again. But our soul is not. Our soul is not. It, we need to renew our minds. Our soul is made up of our mind, our emotions, and our will. So we, uh, we, 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 we renew our minds, but our in our carnal mind, our, we have two minds. We have a renewed mind and a carnal mind. So when we sin, we are listening to our carnal mind, not to our renewed mind. Our renewed mind is renewed back to the word of God. And if you look at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, that we present our bodies unto him, which is our reasonable work of service. And, and then it says in verse 2, be not conformed to the things of this world, but be renewed by the, by the transformation of your mind. So we renew our minds back to the word of God. But our carnal mind is big, always wants to rule and reign in our lives. But we've got to learn, we've got to discipline ourselves to listen to our renewed mind, listen to what God's saying to our hearts and don't listen to our carnal mind because when we listen to our carnal mind, that's when we start falling into sin. And we've got to realize that God has called us to holiness and to righteousness. If you look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, it says there, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So God has called us. God has called us to holiness. And, um, you know, that's the only way we can live our lives. We have to live our lives to holiness uh, through our renewed mind and not through our carnal mind. And we just got to be uh, realize that, that God has called us to holiness uh, to live our lives in righteousness uh, and to live that a life of relationship with him, which is full of holiness and righteousness. And don't live our lives unto sin. Don't live our lives unto our carnal nature, our carnal mind. Um, you know, it says to live, live in righteousness, live in righteousness. And we need to do that all the time. We don't go and visit righteousness once a year. We don't visit it once a year. We need to live in our right, live in righteousness all the time. And the only way we can do that is to live out of our renewed mind, which is renewed back to the word of God. We're listening to the word of God. We're not listening and following after our carnal mind. We've got to discipline ourselves. Uh, we've got to uh, crucify the, that carnal nature that carnal mind, uh, it's like a circumcision, where it's cutting away, uh, crucifying it, living our lives under God. And if we keep living our lives under God, that power of the carnal mind begins to lose its power. You hear what I said? If we live our lives under God, we live, we read the word, we live under him, we listen to God all the time, we begin, we grow strong in God, we live, we, we start living a life of righteousness and holiness. And when we do that, that carnal mind will begin to lose its strength. And that's what we want. We don't want the carnal mind to have any strength and any ruling uh, and uh, reigning in our lives. We need to live our lives under God, live our lives in righteousness and holiness, and live our lives in relationship. We don't want to live our lives into sin. So um, it says in... Um, in uh, Romans uh, uh, chapter uh, 5, verse 20, it says, uh, Paul says, um, it says there that where sin abound, grace does, does much more abound. When sin abounds, grace does much more abound. But listen, we don't want to live our lives in our carnal minds. We don't want to live our lives in sin because that's where sin is. Sin is in our carnal mind. We don't want to live our lives in that because why would we want to live our lives into sin? And uh, because if we do continually do that, we're separating ourselves from God and uh, we need to live our lives in connection with God in, in living a life of righteousness and holiness. 
and uh, and getting rid of that uh, that carnal mind, uh, that carnal mind who wants to sin all the time. And we need to learn to listen and discipline ourselves and to live a life of righteousness and holiness unto God. And listen, we can do this. The church can do this because the word says that. The word says that we can live a life of holiness and righteousness. The word says that we were called to holiness. So if the word says that we can do it, then we can do it. We can do it because Jesus did it. Jesus lived a life free from sin. Whenever the enemy came uh, upon his life with, tempt with temptations and trials and persecution, he always trusted the Father. And because he lived a life without sin is because the why, the reason why he did live a life without sin is because he always trusted in the Father. He always listened to the Father. He never listened to the enemy putting those carnal thoughts into his mind. Um, and, uh, and that's what the enemy does. The enemy can't attack our spirit, but the enemy can, can attack our minds. So we've got to be careful that whenever the enemy wants to come in, and that's why it's called the battlefield of the mind, because we have a decision that we have to make. When trials and temptations come, we have to make a decision whether we want to live a life of holiness and righteousness under God through our renewed mind, which is renewed back to the word of God. So we need to read the word of God or we can listen to our carnal mind and keep falling into sin. Let's have a look at uh, temptation. Let's have a look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verses uh, 14 and 15. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. And that's the last thing we want to do. So we can see there that when temptation comes, we have a choice. We have a choice to either to listen to our carnal nature, our carnal, and that's where sin comes from, or we listen to God and live a life under him. Jesus lived a life of, of, of freedom uh, and he destroyed and conquered sin because he trusted in God. And when we ask Jesus Christ to come into our lives, he brings his victorious nature into our lives. So when Jesus comes in and lives inside of us, he brings his victorious nature so we can live a life of sin as well. We don't have to. Why would we want to live a life of sin again? Why would we want to open up our doors, open up our lives to sin again? Uh, you know, we don't want to do that. We don't want to have sin in our lives that breaks them down, that barrier that of relationship that we have with God. We want to live our lives unto God. So uh, be be aware when trials and temptations come your way, because the enemy that's the enemy that God never tempts you uh, at all. It's only the enemy that wants to tempt you. So um, let's have a look at um, at 1 John chapter 5. Some powerful scriptures here. 1 John chapter 5, um, 16 and 17. So if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say that you should pray about that. So you can see there, if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin, which does not lead to death. So we can still fall into sin, but it doesn't lead to death. Uh, and then he asked that uh, he asked and he will give him life to those who commit sin, not leading to death. And then it says there is a sin that leads to death. So we've got to be aware that there is a sin that leads to death and destruction. But when we are born again, there is sometimes we do have sin around our lives, but it doesn't lead to death. So when that happens, um, you know, it says there in, in John chapter 1, uh, verses 7 to 9, it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is in, is not in us. And this is the verse I want to look I want to look at. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. 
if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we are born again, because we sometimes listen to our carnal mind, we fall into sin. When we do that, do we lose our salvation? No, of course we don't, because God looks back at the time when we become born again, and he looks at our heart. Our heart wants to cry out to God. Our heart cries out to our Savior. Our, our hearts accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and he comes in and we're born again. But sometimes we do fall into sin. When that happens, if we confess our sin and we repent of our sins, God is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we don't want to live a life unto sin. We confess our sin and he's just and faithful to forgive us our sins. But we want to live a life unto God. So, so whenever sin or temptation comes, we need to discipline ourselves and listen to God and follow after God and to fill our minds with the word of God, fill our minds with God. Uh, and, and, and if we do that, then the power of sin, uh, power of sin is, uh, begins to lose its power in our lives. Jesus lived a life of, without sin. We can also do that. But if we do sin, then we, uh, we are, if we confess that sin, then God is, is also just and faithful to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, uh, you know, th that's powerful when that happens. So I just want to encourage you um, tonight with that word that, uh, that when we're born again, we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Jesus didn't do anything more that for us when we got saved than what he did 2,000 years ago. We just received salvation. We believed him as our Lord and Savior. We believe what he did for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. And we ask him to come into our hearts and our lives and we are born again. But sometimes we fall into sin and it's because we have our, our spirit is born again, but our mind is not born again. It has to be renewed. And we have a renewed mind and we have a carnal mind. I often use this um, example. If a brown dog and a spotted dog were fighting, which one wins? Okay, a brown dog and a spotted dog. If they were fighting, which one wins? The answer is the one that you feed the most. I've often said this one, this story. So if the spotted dog wins, it's because we feed him the most and we don't feed the brown dog. And it's the same with our minds. We have two minds. We have a carnal mind and a renewed mind. So if we are feeding the renewed mind, we it will always win. But And if we, we don't feed our carnal mind, it will begin to lose its power. So we just live a life unto God. We, we don't fall into sin. We don't live a life of, uh, of uh, watching Netflix or going mixing with the wrong crowd, going out to parties, going out to the clubs. We mix in with church people. We're, we're, we're reading the word. We're having fellowship. Uh, we're praying to God and all that. We are building up ourselves in the most holy faith. We are renewing our minds back to the word of God. And we are feeding our renewed mind. When we do that, our carnal mind begins to lose its power. But if we do happen to sin, then God is, is always gracious and faithful to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we do fall into sin after we're born again, we don't lose our salvation. That's most important that we do that, that we understand that. Uh, but when we do sin, we don't want to go back into sin. We don't want to open our lives up to sin because we want to live a life unto God. Um, if you look at Romans chapter 5, verse 17. It says there, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through Christ Jesus. You know, we want to reign in life, don't we? We want to reign in life. So if the only way that we can live, live and reign in life is we live after God. We live after him. We don't live a life of sin. 
we can never live a life of sin and reign in life. It's just two opposites. It's the complete opposites of one another. The only way that we can live a life of righteousness and live a life of, uh, of, of, um, of reigning in life is to live a life unto God and to see that uh, carnal nature is dead and buried and, uh, and we live a life unto him. Um, so uh, just want to encourage you with that word that, uh, that uh, you know, you are totally born again. But we need to renew our minds. Renew our minds back to the word of God. And it says that. But if we do happen to sin, it's only because our sin is reigning in our carnal mind. Sin comes from our carnal mind. It doesn't come from our spirit because our spirit is born again and 100% full of the Holy Ghost. But when we do sin through our carnal mind, we confess our sin. We ask God to forgive us of our sins. And he is just and faithful to forgive us of, of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, um, you know, just want to encourage you to keep going after God, keep a life of uh, living after God, filling your hearts with, uh, uh, with righteousness and holiness. That's what he's created you for, to live a life unto him. Don't live a life under sin. Why would you want to go back into sin? Because sin will only cause death. If you keep falling into sin, it's, you're not never going to reign in life. God wants us to reign in life. And uh, so uh, live a life under him and, uh, and, and you'll, uh, God will just open your life up and you, you're living a life the way that God wants you to live because uh, God has created us for significance. God has created us to make a difference. God has created us to rule and reign in life. And uh, we can't do that if we're listening to our carnal mind and following after our carnal mind. But we need to live a life unto righteousness, praying and believing God, reading his word, talking to God, being connected to God uh, and not being connected and following after sin. So uh, thanks for um, for joining me uh, tonight. It was great uh, chatting to you and talking to you about uh, the power of God.